Hello and welcome to day three of the Pan-African Youth Congress. We are so excited because first of all, it's culture day. Oh, in case you did not know what I am wearing. Today, I am wearing an outfit called dashiki okay so this it comes from the kenyan culture the coast culture i hope by the i really hope i'm telling the truth <laughs> but yes this is dashiki and we are going to see other cultures but before we do that i need to take you guys to what happened last night at the lover's paradise Ooh. <laughs> join me let me show you what happened last night this is still day two of the pan-african youth congress this is what happens at night are you seeing all around me there are games people are having so much fun socializing playing games making noise <laughs> it's such a good time so this is what happens at night. If you're not here tomorrow, do not miss. Come here, have fun with the rest of the youth. So far, so good. After a long time of the day, it's time to relax. We're happy. Uh, this game is called Kumbele Okushule, meaning you go forward or you go backwards. Yeah. And where you say everybody jata, yeah. it means you hold your friend, the one, in, the one that is in front of you. Yes. Yeah, I found them, but they looked bored, so I tried to make them active, and I introduced that game, and they became a little bit live. Are we interrupting anything? No, no, you're not. No, not at all. Oh, really? So what, what are you guys up to? <laughs> okay, I've just met a prince is from Nigeria. Uh -huh. I'm glad he's from Zambia. We've just met, he's, he's asked me what I do in life, and I'm explaining to him. It seems like we're all both business-minded, so we're trying to come up with something that can help us, both of us. Ah, that's great. Do you have something to say? That's what we are up to, you know, uh, Glad is a business lady. I'm a businessman. So we're trying to see how we can connect Nigeria with Zambia in terms of business, expand our course. It's, uh, it's a very good platform. So what are you guys up to? We're trying to understand each other's culture is different. How many cultures are represented here? Kenya, uh, Zambia, South Sudan, Malawi. Wow! Ah, we're just chilling, networking, uh, and having fun. Yeah, socializing. I see. Yeah. Are there... Kenya. Uh -huh. Yeah, we just met. Your name is Naomi. Naomi. And I'm from Zimbabwe. Yeah. Okay. Are we having like some something cooking, something interesting cooking? Between, I don't know. You tell me. Ah, uh, not yet. We are, we are still in the process. Yeah. <laughs> I said maybe it's on the way. <laughs> yeah. And I feel so nice. It's really nice to jump like this because when you are kids, you are told like jump. But now when you are growing up again, for like you are big now, you cannot jump. But it's really nice to jump and do some exercise before going to sleep. Despite the cold too, it's really nice. I'm really enjoying it. The taste of the pudding is in the eating. Watch me. <clears throat> Many a times as young people in this generation as singles have taken the worldly definition of morality and have am I beginning to live a wrong lifestyle because they haven't gone to the to the manufacturer's manual the Bible to find what does God have for you that was created male for you that was created female high blood pressure actually starts at 20 years old heart attacks start at about 20 years old you see that's why I think because right now you can make a whole lot of difference and I'm talking especially for young people this information is for you so that you can make what we call choices for your benefit. Not only that, but so you can also impart to the local churches because that's the reason why you are being sent here so that you can impact on yourself and also impact on the church. Around a member to be disciplined uh, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. 
we have about 14 of uh, those reasons for which uh, we would be uh, disciplined. One of them is denial of our fundamental belief. You know, we have uh, 28 of them. Um, things we profess, things we uh, practice as a seventh-day Adventist. So if you deny them or you are teaching contrary, then we could discipline you. People know that you are Adventist, and most times when your businesses are closed, your shops are closed on Sabbath days, people know that. They ask questions. From there, you can evangelize them. They say, why is this business not open today? Why is this filling station not opening today? Fuel station? Why is this company not open today? I say, oh, the, the owner of the company is an Adventist. Oh, what about oh, who are Adventists? Who are they? Are they cultists? No, they are not cultists. They believe in Jesus Christ and they believe in the biblical Sabbath. The presence of God that brought blessings in the life of Joseph. He was in prison enjoying life. He is removed from prison enjoying life. And the bottom line is because he was in the presence of who? God. But how many of us will wish to be in the presence of God through and through? The second one, we said you should be at least 16 years and above. So, so you understand? So we shouldn't... There are two independent ministries. You can start with the seed and stay there with the senior youth. I attended that of the cultural diversity and I learned uh, about me taking the uh, message to people of other cultures and how to accept other cultures. So which workshop did you attend and what did you learn? Uh, I attended the workshop for Christian living yeah, and I have learned that for you to live as a Christian you really need to accept Jesus and live in the way that Jesus would really want you to. I learned that how relevant the Bible to us at this present time, most especially the younger one. In most of our churches, the younger one they didn't attend Bible study. But based on the lesson we study, that we should encourage our people to attend the Bible study. Because without Bible study, we can't grow. Worship covers so many elements. It's not only about the music and singing, but covers so many elements, including dress. And, and then we also talked about how the African worship is, you know, has its own uh, you know, dimension and way. Yeah. Uh, we learned uh, how, how, how to do personal evangelism and in fact that is the main core of evangelism because many of us we prefer public evangelism than uh, personal evangelism but what is the desired of us is uh, personal evangelism. Uh, we, we went uh, in community involvement. Uh, we learned about um, the youth, the local church, how the youth should be involved. Yeah. So like I said earlier, it is culture day today and we're just about to look around seeing what different cultures people are wearing and the countries that they come from. With me is the one and only MC of the week. Where, tell us your name and where you come from. Okay, my name is Morange Gimonge Nyemaga. I come from Tanzania. Is that what you're wearing today? Is it a, a Tanzanian outfit? Yes. Wow, what is it called? Um, it's a mixture of Maasai and this black is for the Sukuma, like Kaneki there, they wear black. Wow! I have just one question to ask you. How are the workshops going on for you? Which one have you attended and what did you learn? Today I attended the class of morality and from there I saw that it's... I, I, I have been single, yeah, mm. and all my life I've been single. And today I got more encouragement of staying single. You know, I'm still 16 and yeah, it's good for me to stay single until when I'm ready for that. Okay, how do you know when you're ready? Uh, when I'm mature and when I feel that I, I can be stable on myself, then that's when I'll be ready to date maybe. Okay. I believe to date, that means, when you have to date, that means you are ready to get married. So for now, I'm not ready to date because I, I don't think I'm ready for marriage. Uh, that will be every marriage. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so those who've been eyeing her, I'm so sorry. I'm so, she's single and waiting for the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you too. Which country are this you wearing? This is Botswana and uh, probably look like a chief today. <laughs> I like it. Does it have a name? 
Um, it's just a leather outfit uh, that our you know leaders put on back home, uh -huh. and uh, just it's a sign of uh, uh, responsibility and leadership. I think culture is such a beautiful narrative in our so, uh, in our social context. It just gives it helps us to express ourselves in the way we best know, so that we may understand the word of God. And I think when you understand yourself, you are you easily relate with what you can be because of the teachings of the Bible. So, as much as we are cultural people, the culture of the Bible takes dominance. You're, you're, are you from Zambia? No, I'm from Ethiopia. Wow, what is this called? This is called Abesha lips, and so it's a traditionally woven cloth. I'm not fooling the, the whole attire, but this is just the top. This is from Liberia, West Africa. Beautiful, what is this attire called? Oh, well, it's just our country cloth, we usually call it country cloth. Whereas uh, this is Zambia, I come from Zambia. That's why I love to put on this. It will be easy for people to identify us because these are our Zambian uh, yeah, colors. So, so this is the flag that you're seeing here. Yes. And then this is the, the, the national symbol, actually, it's the fish eagle. What country are you wearing? Uganda. Uganda. Uh -huh. And what is, what is your outfit called? It's called um, Shanana. Uh, this one is called Ikanzu. Beautiful. This is Uganda traditional wear from specifically Boganda region. Uh -huh. And what is what is it called? What is this attire called? This is Gomesi. It's called Gomesi Busuti. And that is made up of uh, a Gomesi itself and a sash. We call this Echitambala. <laughs> Echitambala. Echitambala. Ah. <laughs> yes, Echitambala. Good. Where do you come from? We're coming from Malawi, the warm heart of Africa. Beautiful. Is this your traditional outfit? Not really a tradition, but it's a cloth for tourism. So we're just trying to promote tourism for Malawi. Hashtag P A Y C 19. <laughs> Uh, this is the Guatiringa family. We come from Wakanda. Uh, just joking. <laughs> we are from Zimbabwe, but today uh, we are celebrating our friends from Nigeria. We once did a week of prayer in Babcock, so they dressed us today. So um, that's why we are looking all Nigerian. Oga. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm Nigerian. I'm wearing a Nigerian clothes. I'm representing the eastern part of Nigeria. Uh huh. We call it um, Igbo, that's Igbo culture. It's easily worn, it can be worn, it can be worn as a gown, it can be worn as a, um, a wrapper. So, beautiful, beautiful, thank you. So what is your staple food at South Sudan? Uh, in South Sudan we have what we call Kodra. Mm -hmm. Kodra is a sauce, it's slippery like okra. Ah. Yeah, Be we eat it with the, what we call Kisra, that is our staple food. I am here with the amigos. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Angola. hey, Angola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how do you say hello in Angola? Hola. 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 What country do you come from? Botswana. What are you, what atta is this? What is this called? It's called Leteisi. Hey, Leteisi. So it's a, the kind of attire that we use for formal ceremonies. It comes in different colors. The popular one would be blue. Uh -huh. that you go, you take in when you are going to get a bride or bring the bride home. From Zambia, you have a very unique outfit today. Where, what can you tell me about what you're wearing? Well, this is a traditional attire back home in the province called Western Province of the Republic of Zambia. Mm -hmm. And this is our attire that we actually get glad in when we have festivals that are quite exciting and exuberating for our people within the community. That <laughs> yeah, it looks like a dress and it's just cold decisive for the men and we just get excited when we are glad in this attire. Mukama Mulunji! Hey, I'm here with the Ugandans. Are you seeing all these outfits? Oh, Maybe you could yeah. tell us what is this outfit called? This outfit is for the female. It's called Gomesi. <laughs> what is your favorite Bible verse? John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave it the only begotten son. That was where I believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. What are you wearing? Uh, Zimbabwe. Wow, what is this outfit called? Uh, it's a Ndebele traditional mm. attire. 
Yeah. Beautiful. All those colors. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> what is your staple food in Zimbabwe? Uh, it's called sadza. Ah, yeah. which is also ugali. Exactly. And, ah. and then in our own language, you call it ischwala. It's Chwala. Yeah, it's Chwala. <laughs> wow, thank you. Oh, thank you as well. Thank so which you. workshop did you attend and what did you learn? Uh, actually, I'm a support team. So I wasn't exactly attending the workshop. I was oh. directing people, welcoming them to our workshop and taking attendance and all. Questions to ask you. Yes. Who is the president of your country? My home country is Kenya mm -hmm. and my president is Uhuru Kenyatta, my guy. Hey, how old is he? Um, let me see. Oh my God, I've not been so much up to the current affairs. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> I think he's 50. What? Kindly? How, how old is he? <laughs> okay, okay. On I don't know. Clearly. How, how do you spell the word Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar. N E B U K A. D E N E N Z E R. Oh my God! Do I know that? Thank you. You got me. You're I got mad. You. I got you. I got her. What is the last book of the Old Testament? The last book. Micah. What? Is it Micah? Good try. Good try. Good try. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very easy question. How do you spell Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> okay. Pass. Pass. <laughs> By any chance, yes. do you know how to spell the word Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar. I should try. Mm -hmm. N e b u c h a k. Nebukadne N E double Z A R. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> How old was Jesus when he ascended to heaven? 120, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you spell the word Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar. N E B U C H. A R D Z A R. Hey, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> thank you. I was there. I don't know if I spelled it well. <laughs> Question: Who replaced Judas among the twelve disciples, or rather, yeah, who replaced Judas? Hmm, I'm not sure. How do you spell Nebuchadnezzar? I want my son to answer that question. So please find my son and he will answer that question. He'll know the spelling. Definitely. Okay. That's my boy. That's your boy. <laughs> that is all we had for you today. It's been a great day. I hope you've enjoyed these highlights. So for those of you who missed last night's Lovers Paradise experience, do not miss tonight's Culture Night. We're going to be looking at all the different cultures and the attires and mingling and all that interaction, networking, socializing. You do not want to miss out on that. So see you tomorrow on our next highlights.